Hi, my name's Tim and I'm from the southeast of England and in my spare time I like to do a bit of home experimenting. Now the videos, the, next, the four videos I'm going to be doing here are all based on the subject of making your own supercapacitors and batteries. And they're all leading on from videos made by a guy called Robert Murray Smith, who I understand is a qualified chemist. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, if you're not already familiar with his videos, please go and take a look at uh, his videos on, on the subject. It gives a lot of background to the, uh, the videos that I'm going to be doing. Uh, he's uh, encouraged us uh, to make our own videos. So here I am doing my own video. Uh, in fact, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be doing this. Um, or uh, even uh, attempting to uh, make my own supercapacitors or batteries. Uh, it was from uh, watching his uh, his videos uh, that inspired me to have a go myself and uh, also to go into the uh, chemistry side of things uh, and even uh, put together my own lab. So uh, this first video is uh, an introduction and also a little lab tour of uh, the little spare room that, I have, that is just down there, of uh, which is where I have my lab set up here in my flat. <clears throat> so we'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later on. Hopefully uh, you'll find it interesting and can pick up some interesting bits and pieces because... Um, the whole idea of doing these videos really is to uh, learn from each other um, and to be part of an online community and to um, give, e give each other some tips and ideas and inspiration. <clears throat> so um, the next two uh, videos after this one are going to be part one, part two of how I uh, produce a high surface area, high performing carbon foam from sugar. And uh, I, I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how I uh, make that, uh, wash it and then graphitize it in my homemade kiln. Um, it's based on something that Rob showed us in a video, I think that was called um, how to make high performance uh, uh, super, super capacitor materials part one. I'll put the link of that video at the start of that uh, <coughs> on that uh, video uh, so that you can all uh, take a look at it first if you if you wish. So it has to, a lot of credit has to go to, to Rob for showing us that. Um, so it's basically my own recipe from that. Um, I've tweaked a few things, added a couple of things to the recipe, changed a methodology, um, and it's something that I've been most interested in and have had the most success with. Um, and it's the best high-performing carbon or active material that I've been able to produce to make um, my own supercapacitors. So um, I'm going to um, show you all of that in those uh, two videos. Then in the fourth video, uh, I'm going to show you how I test each supercapacitor cells and make comparisons between the different uh, different carbons. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn a lot from those. Um, don't necessarily take everything I say and do as gospel and that's exactly how you should do it. It's all really about um, giving each other ideas, picking up tidbits of information and uh, learning from each other. So just to give you a bit of a, a background to uh, where I'm all coming from, really, about four years ago, um, incidentally, I'm kind of more from a um, physics side of science, uh, kind of a background. Uh, ever since I was a child, I was always uh, interested in electrical things that lit up and I loved to be able to make my own things, take things apart, find out how they work, repair things. I just basically love um, making my own things um, and all very, and being very te technical minded. <clears throat> and about four years ago, I was um, interested in eco technologies and making my own solar panels and wind turbines. And um, I found out about this amazing material called uh, graphene. 
And uh, I, I um, went online to search about how on earth you can make your own graphene at home. I wondered if it was possible. And that's when I came across videos made by Robert Murray Smith on the subject of um, how to make your own graphene. And from watching his videos, I became very uh, inspired by uh, his, uh, his watching his videos and uh, also by the success he was having making his own supercapacitors and batteries. So that really uh, inspired me to um, go into the, uh, the chemistry side of science, which I knew nothing about before. Um, set up my own lab and started uh, experimenting um, and he's encouraged to us to to make our own videos and to uh, to share what we're all up to which is what I'm going to do and um, the amount of experience that I've been able to uh, gather over these few years um, is, is quite amazing actually just how much you can just learn from just actually doing these, uh, doing these things, and the experience you pick up, you just become, get better and better at, at doing it, and picking up and learning um, tip bits of information. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's where I'm coming from, really. Um, I just I am just some somebody that likes to make my own make my own things. Um, and I just love to be able to make my own supercapacitors and batteries uh, to perhaps use on my electric bicycle, for instance. Um, I also uh, like other technologies, like sound technologies is a particular interest of mine. Uh, I do a bit of radio and sound production work, uh, hence the microphone. And um, also I do a bit of DJing as well. Um, so the whole idea of these videos really is to... Uh, become part of an online community and share ideas and to help each other out. I uh, hope you learned something from my videos. Now let's go and take a look at the lab. So this is the door to my little lab room. Uh, in its pre With the previous occupants, it was in fact a nursery. You can see some evidence of it there. Uh, yeah, a nice little spare room this was. Uh, uh, but now look at it. This is what happens when you watch too much, too many Robert Murray Smith videos. Um, this is the dry area. As you, as you see, I have to be quite uh, clever with uh, storage and uh, putting things up and out the way. And there's a little area. That's my testing area, by the way. A little tip for you. If you've got loads of magnets, you can put those on a, a flat steel plate and you can hang your uh, metal tools on it. Uh, this is the carpet protector. It's always a good idea if you've got carpeted floors. I uh, had to put a whole load of that down. You can see there's quite a lot of carbon in there. Uh, this is the uh, wet ends and a lot more storage, obviously. A whole load of apparatus, which we'll go into more detail in a moment there on the on the bench. Uh, this is where I keep all my chemicals up on the, uh, on the shelf there, a lot of them uh, up there. This is the heating area, a couple of heating plates there. And this is the calendar, where you calendar stuff. So this is my homemade heater stirrer. Uh, there's a couple of magnets, north and south, on that rotating spindle there on an electric motor made a frame for it uh, to enclose it and on top there I've got um, the heating element as it were uh, this is something that I uh, got the idea from watching one of Robert Murray Smith's videos uh, so you have to take some of the credit for this it's basically the conductive ink on a ceramic tile two strips of copper either side and we've got some capped on tape there on top um, and it heats to about 80 degrees. I only need about 50 degrees um, to make um, graphene oxide, uh, but I don't really use the heating element that much, more just, just as a, a stirrer. Variable uh, voltage on it, so you can change the speed. Speed it up or slow it down. You can see that that spins round. So when you've got that in a beaker, that will spin round and stir your solution. This is my uh, sonicator. I use it quite a bit, particularly for things like graphene oxide and making graphene. This is my homemade vacuum filter. I uh, chose to use a disused 
a high pressure spray bottle I had going spare. These are used for spraying uh, weed killer and, and such like. Uh, obviously, um, with this type of uh, plastic bottle, it's tough enough to cope with the high pressures. You can't just use any old flimsy plastic bottle. Um, so that's what I used there. And you can drill a little hole in there, put in um, a little connector which connects to a hose, make sure it's all airtight. And then that connects into this um, air water pump. Uh, they're quite cheap to buy from China and uh, you put it in the suck end obviously and it runs off between 12 and 24 volts I think. I happen to have a an adapter lying around from an old uh, laptop that uh, has, uh, has since gone um, so it uh, runs off 22 volts which is perfect for that uh, little pump. Uh, now I also went on eBay to buy a cheap plastic Buckner funnel uh, which you'll see here in a moment, which goes in the top of the bottle. And uh, it has a, a rubber inner tube I got from a bicycle inner tube, and that creates a nice, uh, makes it nice and airtight when you fit it into the bottle. So in the next video, I'm going to be show you how I make this really high surface area, high performing, lightweight, fluffy carbon. That's coming up in the next video. Thanks for watching.